and welcome back to another video. It has been a couple of weeks since I filmed a video and there's two reasons for that. Number one, the weather has just been awful and I've like not known what to film about. And secondly, I've just been really busy. Um, so this week alone, I've been on a dormouse survey and a bat survey yesterday, um, which was really exciting, but it hasn't left me with much time. But today I am free. So, and it is also a glorious day, as you can see from the weather. Um, so I'm going to film a video. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually on my way to a nature reserve. Um, to do a bit of like summer photography to see if I can find like some damselflies, dragonflies, that sort of thing, um, maybe some reptiles. But on the way there, I have just stopped off at my dad's house, which is where I have a few weeks ago I put down like a reptile um, trap, but it doesn't really trap them. It's more like a metal sheet on the ground. And it's basically meant to attract them because they go to where the heat oh i'm shaking the camera a bit wait um i'm it, it yeah it's like a metal trap on the ground and it basically um they go underneath it because it's warm and so if you lift it up they're supposedly meant to be there um so i put it down a few weeks ago and because it's really sunny today and I, it's on my way to the nature reserve i thought we could check it so yeah i'm gonna go do that and then we will head off to the actual nature reserve and i will see you all in a bit when we get there I also forgot that today, because it is so sunny, I have actually brought my hat with me. And I've also had to use, where is it? Put it down somewhere. Today is the first day that I've had to bring out my green sun cream, which is basically, um, it's like one of those roll-on sun creams, but it's green because I, yeah, I wanted a green one. Um, so, you know, wear your sun cream but make it fun by making it green. Um, so I put some of that on, but it, it doesn't actually look green, as you can tell, but when you put it on, it's like green, so that's fun. Um, that isn't really relevant to anything, but it is fun. So let's go check the reptile trap. So the trap is just over here. Oh, I didn't actually bring my camera. Well, if there's something under it, um, this is this is it here, yeah, basically a metal sheet. Um, you're meant to use like corrugated iron, but didn't have any of that so we just used this um it's right next to a compost heap which is apparently good for reptiles they're meant to like it there um so let's lift it up and find out if there's anything underneath it i'm not sure what i'll do if there is something under there but we can see uh, i can't see anything there's a snail the grass has died but i can't see any reptiles unfortunately today um it is quite warm though but I can't see anything under there for today. Sad times. Um, oh, there's some ants and a spider. No reptiles though. Maybe next time. Anyway, I'll put it down again. Um, you never know. Maybe one day there'll be something under there. But let's head off to the actual nature reserve now. Right, hello guys. I have now made it to the nature reserve. All good times. Um, there is like three different habitats here i guess i would call them um there's like a heathland area which is where i currently am except i'm under a tree right now um then there's like a forestry area and then there's like a wetland area where there's the ponds and stuff that they have here um so i'm basically going to make my way all through through each one and then back again um oh i think there's a bird of prey over there um but yeah we're going to see what we can find um hopefully there might be some lizards and stuff um, I did last time, I came here about a week ago to see what was here and see if it was like there was dragonflies yet or not. And I met a guy with a snake hook. Um, I'm not entirely sure what he was doing, but he had a snake hook with him and he said he was looking for adders. Um, and then I saw him later on in the, like an hour or so later after that, and he said he had seen one. So that's exciting. I'm not entirely sure what he was doing though. He's like, why would you need a snake hook? Unless he was trying to catch them. But he didn't have like a box with him, so he can't have been catching them. And I'm not sure why he would want to catch them anyway. Um, but I guess that confirms that they are here if he saw one. But yeah, we're going to make our way through each section and see what we can find. And then hopefully, because I've got the macro lens, we can do like some damselfly and dragonflies when we get closer to the pond. But yeah, I will catch up with you guys in a bit. So this isn't um, what I wanted to photograph this video, but I thought I would show you anyway. Uh, behind me, this 
big thing here is a redwood ant colony? Nest. Nest colony. Um, I don't know what it is about this nature reserve, but it is absolutely full of redwood ants. It must be like the perfect habitat because you can't like go five minutes without standing still, without them crawling on your boots, um, which kind of, it freaks me out, but also they're really cool. Um, I'll zoom in in a minute, um, but I didn't want to stand too close to film this. Um, but yeah, there's there's absolutely tons of these redwood ants it, all around this nature reserve. Like they're climbing the trees, they're everywhere, um, but they're really cool. Um, I'm going to do a video about ant photography because I want to, I've done quite a lot actually in previous years when I've visited here. But I want to do like a like an ant photography video, not just a little section on them because I've got loads of photographs of them. But yeah, I thought I would point it out. You into can't the... move without them being on the ground. Like you can see they're all over. Like I've moved like maybe four, five meters away. And you can still see loads of them going crazy here, um, which is why I don't like to stand still for too long. <laughs> Um, the top bit, the Heathland area. Um, there wasn't that. Oh, there's a dragonfly. There wasn't that many. Um, well, I didn't see any lizards. Basically, is what happened there. Um, it's quite hard because the ground also looks very similar to what lizards look like, um, which is, I guess, why they're so well camouflaged. Um, but I didn't see any basically. So I have now uh, walked upwards, and I am at this nice pond area. There is a bigger pond on the other side of the reserve. Um, straightforward. Um, but I find that one's, it's not as good for dragonflies compared to this one, which maybe is a bit unusual, I don't know. This one has a lot more like reeds and stuff by it, and there's a lot of like vegetation in the water, which I guess is why the dragonflies like it so much. Um, but I'm going to stay here for a bit and do some dragonfly photography, and I will catch up with you in a bit and we'll see what photos we've got. So I've just sat down on what I think is maybe the only part of the entire nature reserve that doesn't seem to have any ants um, calling about it, at least I'm hoping there isn't any. Um, and I thought I would just talk about dragonfly photography and damselfly photography. Um, I didn't know they were a different thing until I like... Damselflies have their wings closed when they land and dragonflies always have their wings open, I think. I think that's the difference. I've got a book. Um, I've got one of those charts, uh, dragonfly and damselfly identification chart. Um, I think that's the difference between them. Who actually, I don't, maybe, maybe that's wrong. Oh my god. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're two different things, basically, and my technique for photographing them is basically just to sneak up behind them really slowly. I don't know if that's, that's like a certified um, approach, but that's what I do basically. I I like stand in the spot and I wait for one, I watch one because there's usually quite a few flying around and I basically wait for it to land and then I basically go towards it as slowly as possible with my macro lens ready to take a photo, um, but yeah that's my approach. Um, so here's the ID chart. Yeah, oh my god, no. I don't want it to extend that much. Um, I think it was one of these ones. Because it looked like one of these, I think. Just in. I have seen an emperor one last summer. I've got a picture of him. And I've seen the hawker ones before as well. 
but I think the one we just took a photograph of was one of these ones here. Like these fatter ones. Oh. I don't know which one though, but we maybe have, I'll look at the picture. heading back towards my car now because I'm quite hungry and it's also quite hot today um but fun fun information that I thought I would share with you guys is that yesterday on the bat course um and what made me think of this is because this um this nature reserve they hold like bat walks um I've never actually been on one but I know they advertise them so there must be bats here and also I've just seen some like bat boxes on the trees um, there's quite a lot in this area actually, look, there's one, that's a bat box I believe, um, yeah I believe that's a bat box, um, but yeah I thought I would, look there's some more, there's some more there, one, two, um, but yeah I thought I would talk about, um, some bats because I've never been on a bat survey until yesterday and it was really exciting actually because I, I, I had no idea how they do bat surveys and I'll wait with some people yeah so as I was saying and I don't I didn't know how they did bat surveys until I went on one yesterday because usually I do dormouse surveys because I'm training for a dormouse license um but I'd never been on a bat one mainly because I thought they were at night time <laughs> I didn't really fancy going out at night oh where am I I got lost wait back this way um so but then the person who I was doing the dormouse survey was like do you want to go on a bat survey tomorrow and I was like yeah sure why not um because I was a bit confused I was like it's in the daytime and she was like yeah it's in the daytime um and so basically what they do is they use like an endoscopic camera you know they are the only other like use I can think of this when they, they use them in the hospital to like go down your throat and like see your stomach and stuff that's the only use I can Where? where's the egg oh it's okay I'm still good oh, where am I I can't, I can't find the exit to the forest. Okay, I'm back, I'm back on the right track now. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the only other use of endoscopic cameras is that I know of is like in hospital where they stick them down your throat and like look at your insides and stuff basically. Um, but they use them for bat box checking as well apparently. Um, and so basically, I'll put up a photograph, but it's like this tiny camera on a big stick, um, like an extendable stick thing. And they, you have to be licensed to use it. So. Um, or with you have to be like in training to use it basically so you nobody you can't really go around and do it yourself or you shouldn't um and i mean where would you get on just an endoscopic camera unless you were training to be a bat person i don't really know um but yeah we were with like licensed people and it was like an official thing for the um place we were doing it um all right i'm on, I'm on the right track now um but basically they use this big camera and they Put it up into the bat boxes to record if there's any bats in there um and i didn't know this but bats i thought all bats like lived in attics and caves um which is probably just me being a bit stupid because like where do they live before attics and where do they live if there's no caves around um they live in like hollowed out trees or like cracks in trees if they're big enough um which i didn't know but yeah that's a fun fact for you anyway so we were doing this survey and there was all these bats in these boxes and it was really exciting. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would talk about that for a second because I've never done one before and I don't think, you don't know these things unless you're like into wildlife. And even then, 
like I'm into wildlife and I had no idea that that's how they did bat surveys until yesterday. So yeah, I will put up some pictures of bats to show you guys. I have made it out of the forest now, um, which is good because I could have just walked around there for a few hours. But uh, yeah, let's walk back to the car now and I'll catch my breath before I end the video. now um this path is quite bumpy um have i seen oh i've seen an interesting i think it's an orchid um i'm not that good at plant photography no plant identification well plant photography and identification to be honest um but i think it's a type of orchid uh this morning i did watch crash crash course botanic bo botany but that botany the plant one um with Alexis the um the black forager who is amazing by the way and it was it was really great um so I'm going to definitely keep watching those ones uh when they are released but oh uh, yeah I'm not that great at plant photography or identification but I think it was an orchid um oh there's a bike coming uh but I didn't see any lizards today so sadly or snakes snakes or lizards um I have seen them here before and as I said earlier about the snake guy I saw who saw an adder um maybe <laughs> maybe he took him with his snake hook no um so hopefully next time i will have better luck but i did see quite a lot of dragonflies and damselflies which was nice and this is like the first time i've been able to photograph them this year um and i saw some ants as, as usual and that nice orchid at the end so that was nice um but i hope you have enjoyed today's video um this has actually turned into quite a chatty video after i started speaking about the bat um bat surveying um so i hope you have enjoyed it and i will see you all next week for a new video Bye.